Welcome back to Metropole Debrief with me, Ndiro Ganga, and I am in studio with Phyllis Akiaga, who is the CEO of Kenya Association of Manufacturers. We've been having a really interesting conversation on the state of manufacturing, but time to bring you into the conversation, and now time for Social Watch. So we did a poll on Instagram, an opinion poll, and we asked you, do you think the manufacturing sector will be able to create 800,000 new jobs by the year 2022? As you can see right here, 33% uh, of you said yes, and 67% uh, of you said no. Now, let's take a look at some of those opinions. Engineer underscore Ocheng says yes, only when he takes into practice the government industries to absorb both skilled and unskilled labor, but if the state remains the same as it is, it won't add any value with the current high rate of population. Phil is factoring in both the informal and formal sector. Um, the manufacturing sector has the ability i would be in the green uh, because as a country if you look at what we import we mm -hmm. our import bill runs into billions and billions of kenya shillings yeah those goods can be produced locally mm -hmm. if you look at the market opportunity where we have access uh, the africa free trade i mean continental free trade area is currently being negotiated and has actually gone into force mm -hmm. you look at agoa market we've barely scratched the surface so I sit in the 33% who believe that we can create those jobs. Mm -hmm. We just need to fix our competitiveness. And as a country, we just need to stay committed to the course. Okay. Because the question is not if we need it. We must do it because yeah. our youth don't have jobs. And we are consuming these products anyway. Mm -hmm. So we may as well produce them locally for our local markets mm -hmm. and use that opportunity to also export. Great. Yeah. Let's take a look at another tweet. Mm -hmm. Atakini Dori says no, part of the 67%. And she says the government is just telling us they will create jobs by 2022, but do we see any initiative in place or the jobs will magically appear? Second, and the most obvious, unless they deal with corruption, the money said to create these jobs will go, most probably just create another scandal. I want to agree on the issue of corruption. One of the things we've spoken a lot about as a sector is that with rent seeking and corruption, you'll mm -hmm. not be able to achieve whatever you're doing as a country. Mm -hmm. um, I think the statistics have shown that a big percentage of the budget goes into corruption mm -hmm. or is, is, is misallocated or misused. So if we're not able to deal with corruption, it will be a tall order mm -hmm. uh, to address the issue of uh, job creation. Okay. Countries like Singapore are where they are because of the issues of meritocracy and the fact that they have dealt with corruption square. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I agree with that part mm -hmm. uh, because if we don't address it, it will be difficult to create jobs. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Another uh, poll on Instagram. A Jairus judge says the cost of production in manufacturing is so high. No tax incentives from manufacturers from the government. Corruption, no licenses to work unless you pay someone. You've been in Western. How comes the cost of sugar production in Kenya is higher than that of Uganda? This is a very passionate person, comes from Western <laughs> Kenya, has seen Mumia's sugar crumble and is seeing we are enjoying sugar from Uganda. What's the discord? We've uh, talked about agriculture and uh, the challenges in our agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to take stock as a country on agriculture as a whole. Uh, I spent a day this week sitting at AFA uh, having some conversations and there's a challenge with agriculture. We devolved agriculture, but I'm not sure we created the same supportive structures. We also need to relook at the products we are invested in mm -hmm. as individuals because yeah. must we all grow maize? Anyone has land you want to grow maize. You have land you want to grow a product. You have to consider whether that's the best product for you to grow because sometimes it, it might make more sense to invest in something else and buy your maize. You'll be able to make more money. So we need to stop being so attached mm -hmm. to certain crops. But I think the broader thing is that we need to fix agricultural policy in our mm -hmm. country. We need to allocate uh, the right resources to grow agriculture um, if we're going to address those issues. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, where do we head to? At Maureen Komboka says, execution of projects in Kenya always takes forever. And given that 2022 is just around the corner, I'm not sure how much will be done. This is more like political mm. uh, policies are short term based on politics mm. rather than long term based on development. Our long term policy, I think uh, when we started Vision 2030, all of us 
we're really, really speaking about that vision. And rallying around a long-term plan is, is very strategic for any country mm -hmm. because a lot of the things that need to be done for you to fix an economy will not happen in an election cycle. Yeah. They need you to stay the course and they need someone to be the carrier of that vision throughout the period. So those are some of the things. And execution is a fact. There are countries where when they say, we are doing this project, they will execute it and execute it to the letter. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes our, our projects don't go that way. It could be because of our democracy, sometimes even our discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, for development budget, if you look at the absorption, even last year or the years before, it's normally at about 50%. So we plan to spend, we only end up doing about 50% and we keep... 50, uh, there's a county 50, that absorbed zero. Wow, no. That's where execution falls <laughs> short. So we have to, if we plan to do things, we must do them. Yeah. That's the only way we can meet these targets. But more than anything, we must have long-term visions as a country. Okay. And be the carriers beyond the election cycle mm -hmm. as citizens and hold our leaders accountable. We take a look at what's up now. And um, at Kalistas, Kali says, the manufacturing sector is not growing much. In any case, it's actually shrinking due to management of pre-existing government factories that have been closing shop, plus exorbitant taxes and competition from foreign goods cause investors to shy away from the manufacturing sector. Samir um, Tires, closed shop, they're, no, they're selling no longer manufacturing. There's so many sectors that we've seen die, Mumia Sugar, the cotton sector, pyrethrum, sisal. What's happening, Wakiaga? It takes us back to the issue of competitiveness and the cost of production because any investor will invest and produce where they can produce at the least cost. Mm -hmm. So when they take stock and they realize maybe I could produce at a lower cost somewhere else, they'll relocate uh, their investment. But you looked at your manufacturing output. I saw your graphs when you looked. The manufacturing output is growing. People are investing. People are, 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 are growing the output. The thing is it doesn't grow as fast as it should. Uh, because the GDP is growing much more and that's why we are growing at a, at a lower rate. Mm -hmm. But for a country to get to a middle income economy with a high quality of life for its citizens as we aspire to under Vision 2030, you must grow manufacturing much faster than we are and that's a reality. Mm -hmm. I know we'll say that other sectors are more important or more critical but really the reality is no country ever transformed into a, a, a middle income, high quality or developed country without really investing in manufacturing and growing the sector. Good stuff. Another uh, opinion. Atmalili says, no. What money have they pumped into the sector? What incentives are on the table to attract investors? And what purchasing power do Kenyans have? We can mm. manufacture all products we want, quality mm. products, but mm. if Kenyans don't have money in their pockets... Yeah, purchasing power is, is a challenge and also the issue of cash flow in the economy. Uh, one one of the of the big challenges we've had as a country is that we are in the habit of not paying each other. You don't pay your friend, the business doesn't pay the SME, the government doesn't pay. And that culture has really led to the fact that people don't have money to spend mm -hmm. because a lot of money is held either in government, owing, retail sector, business to business debts. And I think you saw what the budget is trying to do to address that. A law days. is going to be put in place for 60 days. It's worked in France. They have a code that ensures that you pay people. That way money is able to circulate. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, purchasing power comes from uh, people having the ability to produce and work. Uh, so we must create jobs. Mm -hmm. The fact that we have... Uh, the number of um, unemployed youth we have means that that purchasing power doesn't exist. And then there are also other activities that are taking away purchasing power, like betting, uh, which, is, which, which, which does affect uh, the purchasing power of Kenyans to, to uptake some products. But gambling so, is, is mm -hmm. big in places like Las Vegas. It's what's holding mm -hmm. their economy. That's true. Those are bigger economies and people are able to, 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 to do that. But when a poor Kenyan uses his money to put a bet on a, on a football match, it, 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 it does have a social impact mm -hmm. in, in, in the society. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have another opinion on WhatsApp? Okay. Kenya is not investor friendly. Who will invest in the manufacturing sector for starters? We've spoken about this, yeah, the sorry, environment yeah. in the country. Mm -hmm. Now, we move on to Twitter or where do we go to write about now? There you go. At Stiffy Njogoro, uh, Njogoro, 24 says, what happened to textile industries in Kenya? We recently saw China nationals engaging in Mitumba business here in Kenya. They're coming for you, Wakiaga, on um, Twitter. The, the, the textile industry in Kenya was very vibrant in the 70s and 80s before 
we liberalized our market and once we did uh, and opened up to global competition we we bore the brunt of that mm -hmm. uh, so we saw our cotton farmers give up on farming because they were unable to fetch the prices out there and the textile mills some of them ground to a whole people like Ikomi uh, got into where they are. We've seen the government uh, trying to revive the sector. You've seen even their locations. Tomorrow the president will be in Rivertex uh, relaunching uh, some of their operations. So there's a concerted effort to revive the textile industry because we know that uh, this is one of the backbones. Like automobile textile is one of the industries that must uh, be a backbone of a growing industrial country. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fact that uh, we are looking at reviving textile industry also means that we go back in and we look at cotton farming uh, and not maybe the traditional way we looked at it where we would have small-scale farmers doing it in western kenya but looking at even semi-arid areas a big opportunity to do it in places like turukana garissa because they have large tracts of land mm -hmm. and it might be more affordable so a big opportunity there mm -hmm. and we are exporting a lot under goa Okay, it's, it's quite small, below 3% of, of, of what the market is, mm -hmm. but there's a big opportunity under Goa mm -hmm. to tap into the duty-free, quarter-free access we have to America. Okay. At Okari underscore Dan says, credit is a big challenge to manufacturers. It's almost close to impossible to secure a quick plan for the business. The interest rate capping bill doesn't help equally. Credit is a challenge. That's, that's true, especially for the smaller manufacturers, because manufacturing requires patient capital. It requires long-term capital because it's a sector that the business will not, it's not like trade, you buy today, you sell tomorrow. It, it, it requires that. It requires a grace period for you to be able to recap on your investment before you repay. So cost of capital is, mm -hmm. is critical and mm -hmm. uh, the interest rate cap did affect the access to capital, especially for SMEs. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, is, is something that I, I saw also is being looked at in the budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, at Kipto, Emmanuel says, we increased capital gain tax from 5% to 12.5. Where will investors build manufacturing plants when they come into the country? <laughs> and this is a conversation we had before we came yeah, on air. Yeah. No, th 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 that's an increase. And in terms of a percentage, you can see that's over 100% increase. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, 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 that's quite a big increase. But I think the taxman is trying to find as many ways to, to, to come up with revenue for the 2.8 trillion budget. So that's probably one of the ways to do it. Okay. But it does, it's up over a hundred percent increase. Uh, yeah. Let's take maybe one more tweet. Uh, this is on the ease of doing business. The World Bank says we've improved in relation to ease of doing business. Textbook economics or reality on the ground? This is something we had it. earlier yeah. on mm. discuss. Any other tweet before we wind up? Okay. At Lawrence Barraza says, how many manufacturing companies actually use waste water treatment methods and recycle their water? Saves on cost in the long run. And as I walk back to you, I'd mm. like us to discuss green solutions yes. that the manufacturing sector is trying to uh, incorporate into yes. their day-to-day -day business? Um, that's, that's something that we are doing um, in terms of the water, waste, water treatment and recycling. As an association, we carry out energy audits for our members, resource efficiency audits, water audits. And out of that, we've been able to work with them to identify areas where they can improve in terms of their usage of water or electricity, assisted them to invest in new technologies and we've had support from a number of partners uh, donor partners and even the ministry of of, of energy and others mm -hmm. uh, and also in terms of waste management okay. uh, we are working with our members to see how we can create a circular economy mm -hmm. and uh, uh, there's a lot of conversation and activity happening because we are clear that we have to produce and produce sustainably mm -hmm. as a manufacturing sector. As we almost come to the close of the conversation, mm -hmm. there are several industries in this country that did well and have collapsed. Wabuya pan paper, Mumio's mm -hmm. sugar is struggling, mm -hmm. the river taxes, the government mm -hmm. is trying to revive it, mm -hmm. but where do we go from here if we have to grow our manufacturing sector? Uh, where we go from here is uh, to ensure the things we've said, but we'll restate them. Mm -hmm. First of all, that we create a competitive environment for manufacturing to thrive. All, that, all those cost buildups I talked about, we must attack them. Because if we are not able to have a proper environment for manufacturers to be competitive, they'll not be able to grow. The other thing we must have is a predictable policy environment. Because manufacturing is a business you get into for the long term. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to know that tomorrow, 
uh, county X will not introduce a new law and then state department Y will not come and counter it with a third or fourth law, you know. So a predictable policy environment is critical. Mm -hmm. We also need to ensure that we continue to create markets mm -hmm. uh, because if, unless we consume the products that are produced, we'll not be able to, 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 to grow the manufacturing sector. And then support SMEs to grow, mm -hmm. uh, because SMEs are the backbone, the engine of, of, of economies. Uh, so SMEs require certain very specific support to be able to incubate them and, and turn them into growth-oriented enterprises. So that's critical. And then tackle the issues of rent-seeking and corruption that we spoke about, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, ensure that we have good governance at, 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 at national level and at farm level, mm -hmm. and also addressing farm level competitiveness. So the things we've talked about, how do we look at our own costs in the farm? Because sometimes the cost could be within your own farm, within your own processes. Mm -hmm. So we do things like Kaizen for manufacturers, help them identify uh, more efficient ways to do things. And the last thing, productive labor force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we can only grow as much as uh, our labor force is productive. And uh, we have a productivity center in Kenya, but we need to really start getting our country uh, to become more productive in mm -hmm. terms of the labor force. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is her camera? Camera three. Look into camera three. Yes. To the manufacturers <laughs> at home who are trying to run a business in that sector. Yes. They're watching their CEO tonight. What do you say to them? For the manufacturers, I think we want to continue to support you as the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Uh, we exist to work with the manufacturing sector in Kenya uh, and ensure that we have a competitive and sustainable manufacturing sector. Uh, we also want to work to ensure that we create jobs uh, for the youth in this country. We are very keen uh, to partner and grow SMEs. As an association, we are working on an SME hub uh, that we'll be launching in July. And that hub is going to identify opportunities that exist for all of us as Kenyans uh, to invest in manufacturing and to take advantage of the market that exists. We're also very keen to work with women and encourage more of you to get into manufacturing uh, because we believe that uh, we are able to create a difference. And uh, we are also looking forward to hosting the Comesa Business Council Trade Fair and Business Summit in July from 17th to 21st July, because for us that is really a platform for us to get into the regional markets and to grow intra-Africa trade in this continent. Phyllis, thank you for making time. You're We're welcome. grateful. Thank you, thank you too. We are looking forward to having you more and more, and by 2022 we want you to come back and we can do a stock. progress report. And we'll ask, did that. it contribute 15%? Did we grow by 36% on a yearly basis? And where are the 800,000 new jobs? Thank you. I think but you're on the right path. <laughs> but until then, <laughs> Phyllis says, for a country to achieve a middle income status, it must have a thriving manufacturing sector. Who am I? What do I know? And what should I add? Food for thought. My name is Andrea Oganga. We want to say thank you for watching our producers, Ceci Masiwanza, the director, Stephen Audi, um, and everyone that made this show a success. Sam Tobiko on the camera, Yvonne Toywa. We want to say thank you. We want to say thank you to Sally Kahiu who made this interview possible and the whole Kenya Association of Manufacturers team for allowing us to have a conversation with their CEO. This conversation does not stop here. It continues online. Hashtag Metropole Debrief at Metropole TVK e at Ondiro Ganga at Wakiaga underscore Phyllis. I'll see you when I see you.